Well, hi, thank you for joining me. This is Jacqueline with Nickel and Dime Decor. And <clears throat> I haven't had a video in a while, but it's not because I haven't been busy, busy, busy. I wanted to, I, I received a uh, some dies that go to a go cutter and uh, from my daughter-in-law's mother that passed away. And I wanted, it had a pattern with it. And I wanted to make this wall hanging. And all she had was the dies for the uh, houses, for the little houses. And I'm going to show you a minute. Oh, they're just so cute. I needed seven of them. And they have all kinds of roofs and tiny windows and lots of little pieces. But I, if you don't know anything about a go cutter, uh, I never thought, you know, I really would need one. And I probably don't need one. I wanted one. But, but uh, it's just like those little houses. I couldn't have come up with that any other way. Here's a better picture of them. They're just precious. And um, so anyway, I, I have been working on it and it's, it's very time consuming, but it, it's been enjoyable. And I hope you'll watch the video and see, I had to improvise for the trees because she didn't have that and she didn't have the letters. So there's other ways to accomplish things. Uh, so, Please watch the video on um, my small house's welcome wall hanging. Thank you and God bless. Have a wonderful day. Well, guys, I've got so many things to show you. I don't know where to start, but I guess the first thing you need to do is show you the pattern. This is a wall hanging. And it's only like 11 by 28. N not big at all. But oh my goodness, does it have the, the small little components. Very um, intricate. And, and I know this really isn't for beginning quilters, but um, you could still do it. You really could. Okay. What you need is first to cut out what you can on a go cutter. And the go cutter is this right up here. And I'm going to move the camera down in a minute so you can get a good look. This is a, a shield or a cover that you put over. This is a die with all of the little bits and pieces. There's the door, the chimney, and then that, uh, no, this is a window, chimney, and a door. You just put little scraps over them. That's all you need. And I doubled them up so I could get, you know, two of everything. I, you can cut more. Uh, three or four, but I didn't want to try to do that. This is a rooftop. No, that's a house. That's a house. This is a house, the, the frame of it. These are roof pieces, and this is a roof. And I'm just putting a few things on. But you put that in your machine, put your top over it, and then crank it, turn your handle. And I'll do a better picture to show you how that works. And most of the time, uh, when you buy something from AccuQuilt, does the go cutter, uh, you will have, have and uh, a pattern. And oh my goodness, there is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dies to buy. Okay, but what I need is seven little houses. 
And my um, wall hanging is going to be in three parts, three rows. This is four and a half square, and there's four and a half squares mixed in, alternated. And then the other square is three and a half by four and a half. Well, my friend that I got this go cutter die set from, I inherited all of her stuff. She had the little houses. But if you'll notice, there's trees. Well, she didn't have that, and she didn't have the letters. So this is why I'm having to improvise and why it's taking me so much time. And, but, but it's doable. It's just going to take time. Now, I found in my stash I, these letters. The welcome. I found every letter I need. But they're too big. See, they're just a just a tab too big. So I went and put them on my printer and reduced it, I think, down to 78 or 80. And I got these printed off. And I'm gonna cut them out and put them on uh, if I have plastic left and and cut out my um, patterns, my letters, and then I'll always have them. I won't have to worry about this, but <clears throat> I'm going to cut these out and then put it on my plastic and uh, mark around it and then cut them out. And then I can... Um, find the fabric that I want to make my letters. Uh, this uses a kind of a brown or a grayish, and I, I will probably do that, but I might use black. I don't know. But I got my letters taken care of. I know you can't tell, but we'll just put that over. See how that is just just about the perfect size. See, I have enough, I have enough to uh, get my quarter inch at the top and the sides. So that's gonna work really good. And they could have been even just a little bit smaller, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I, I, I think they'll be perfect when I get, get through. Okay. Now, the, what the letters go on is all of your four and a half inch square blocks. And I know you can't see this, but this does have a real pretty little uh, print on it. It's real pretty. So I have seven of those. And then I need seven more four and a half inch squares. And you can't tell this either, but it's got a... Uh, um, it looks like wood. That's a better piece. It looks like a wood grain, and I really liked that for this. And then the next fabric are the three and a half by four and a half, and I picked out the grain and this one. And so these right here is what the background of my little wall hanging is going to be. And on this little three and a half by four and a half is going to be some trees, which I do not have. She didn't have that either. All she had was the little houses and uh, the four and a half inch square die. I was able to cut that out on the go cutter. But there again, just use your imagination. <laughs> I have this real pretty fabric that I made a little miniature wall, um, a little hanging for my front door. I don't know if y'all remember seeing that. And what I'm going to do is fussy cut, or cut out these trees. And there's a 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, and I only need seven. I know this will be kind of fallish, but this has got apples on it, and that'll be all right. But they'll both be good, and if you can visualize, you see the size of the little tree by the house is going to be just perfect. It's going to be just perfect to put it by the by the house. Um, so they go on this piece, the little houses do. And I think, I, I, well, they won't be as tall as the houses, but, you know, this is my wall hanging and I can do whatever. So it, it, don't think when you're trying to do something that you have to do it exactly because you don't. And so in these, where these houses are, they're not going to be as big as my house. But I think it'll balance out because, see, you alternate them. You go like that and alternate them. And, and I think it'll be fine. I think it'll look just great. So I've got my trees, got my houses. Just messed that one up. <laughs> now you applique these little houses on to your four and a half inch squares to these. And uh, I will put them all on my, you do them piece by piece. You don't try to put them all together like that and then put it on there. That doesn't work. You have to do them piece by piece. So you'll lay them out like this on your paper. And then put the paper on the back. And um, with the rough side, I use Wonder Under. And I put it on there. And then peel it off after it's cooled and adhere it to the block. And uh, the houses are set down on the bottom of the block. And you're going to have a seam, so you got to remember that. So you'll want to put them about Oh, I don't know. Uh, I think about three-eighths or a half inch from the bottom is where your house should go. doesn't have to sit right on the... Oh, I don't know. It would look better if it did. So, yes, I guess we do need to set it a, a quarter of an inch from our seam. And then, at, first of all, and that this is all the components. Now, the very first thing we're going to do is sew this block. This is the right side. We're going to sew this block together, press it, and we're going to use a scant quarter inch, open it up, and press it. And then we will take this one and sew it on and make a row. That's what we're doing is we're making a row. You make all of your rows, then you do your applique. And then our next piece will be another white, another one of these, and we can use... Uh, the this piece then on the next row. Let's see if I can lay it out for you. So let's see if it makes sense. We're going to use this row, this row, and this row. Then your next one will be this row, this row, and this row. And then we'll repeat, and we'll go down and repeat row one. And you're just going to sew them together, and then sew them together this way. Now, 
Now, I think I should have started this way because I've only got three of these. So I'm going to reverse that. Oh, I'm talking and not paying attention to what I'm doing. When you reverse this and put your three and a half by four and a half here, and then your four and a half, and then do this again. Then your next row will be this row. And see your, these three and a half by four and a half are being alternated. They're gonna go middle, out, middle, out. And until we have seven rows. And that, that's, the, that's the whole pattern of the wall hanging. Then you applicate your letters on each one. And uh, you can do a blanket stitch on your machine, which is the cutest. And it's what I'm going to do, except on my trees. Uh, my trees, I'm going to do by hand. You, you see why? They're too tiny to, to do on the machine. I don't, I'd rather go around them with a back stitch and do an embroidery stitch, back stitch, and kind of find the uh, tree limbs up here and do it, just like I did on the door hanging. And then you'll uh, put batting on it and quilt if you want to, around the houses. And I'm, I might do that. What I think I'll do, since this is gonna have a blanket stitch, I don't think I'm gonna worry about any quilting around in these areas. There's not hardly anything to quilt. See what I'm saying? There's not room to quilt anything. So I don't, I'm not going to quilt. And I don't think I'm going to on here either. We'll just have to see when it gets done. But I think, I don't think quilting will be required. You can do it if you want to. And that is my welcome home wall hanging. Now, I'm going to move my machine and I want to show you, I, I don't know if you know anything about a gold cutter, if you've ever used one, but we're, we're going to try it. I thought I might better give you a, a first-hand good look at the uh, gold cutter made by AccuQuilt. And uh, that's, that's how you carry it around. It's not real heavy. It... <clears throat> You know, it's, uh, it is expensive to buy the dies, but um, if, if you have a sewing club like we do, it's so beneficial to buy one as a club and then the members can use it. And you can share the dies and everything. So anyway, that's what it looks like. Okay, here, here's the die. And I'm just putting it right up, butting it up against there. And then you put your cover over it. And then you just kind of push it in up, up against it real good until it grabs hold. Then you just turn it and go all the way through. And I know you can't see that. Let's see if I can move you so you can watch it. There, that's a little better. You just go all the way through. You get past your die. It's not really that hard to turn. It, it, I have back problems and it really wasn't that hard. Now all your fabric stays on your cover because there's a lot of static electricity. So I'll just show you. There's a little tiny, this is a cupcake roof. You put it on like that. Just a little cupcake roof. 
This is uh, your house body. And here is, let's see, it didn't cut. I didn't have my fabric folded right, so I didn't get a very good roof. That, that'll work because, see, you put it down like that, but yet it chopped it off, so that's not a good go. But here's my door. My door turned out perfect. There's my door, and let's see if we got anything else. Here's a window, if we wanted the window that dark, but what I do is I, I put the light colored. You want a yellow or a white or whatever for your windows, something bright. And that's how, and you, you keep your, here's another little, door and you keep all your little pieces I don't need these but I'm gonna keep them keep them in a little ziploc bag and I will have them if I ever make another uh, make a wall hanging for someone else but I tell you what um uh, it's been fun fun and I am so glad that I have learned to use it and I can't wait to get it finished. Now, I know you have no clue of what this is going to look like, but after I get somewhat uh, like all my rows done on my wall hanging, and then I start uh, putting my applique on, we'll have another episode and I'll show you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it so much. And if you would, subscribe. I, I, it would mean the world to me. Thank you.